I'm Mark Sine, minister of the Northfield Church of Christ, and I would like to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, May the 15th. Uh, as is our usual custom, we will sing several songs. We'll observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you. Uh, we're singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. That's our hymn book that we use at Northfield. And I will give you the number, and I will also give you the name of the song. So in case you don't have one of those song books, but another one, or you have a device where you can Google the name, you can sing along with us. And so the first song that we will sing is number 83. 83. It's a very simple song, but uh, very heartfelt. Uh, the title is God is so good. God is so good. <clears throat> God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He's so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. And if you will turn a little over to page number 97, the title of this song is I Sing Praises. I Sing Praises, number 97. I Sing Praises. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord, glory to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord. Glory to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. And our song before the Lord's Supper is number 350. 350, When My Love to Christ Grows Weak. We'll sing verses 1 through 4. One through four. <clears throat> when my love to Christ grows weak. 
When my love to Christ grows weak, when for deeper faith I seek, then in thought I go to thee, garden of Gethsemane. There I walk amid the shades, while the lingering twilight veins, seated suffering friendless one, weeping, praying, there alone. When my love for man grows weak, when for stronger faith I seek, hill of Calvary I go, to thy scenes of fear and woe. There behold his agony, suffered on the bitter tree. See his anguish, see his faith, love triumphant still in death. We turn now to the Lord's Supper part of our service. I think uh, this song um, very much typifies what the Lord's Supper is all about. Um, it is something that, that we are to do each first day of the week, as the scriptures tell us. And um, we are to think of him crucified. We are to behold his agony that he suffered on the bitter tree. And um, what is, is so glorifying uh, about all this is the last line of the song that we sang that said, Love triumphant still in death, even though Jesus died a cruel and physical death. Love was triumphant. It was triumphant because of why he did what he did. He did this to redeem the world. He did this for the sins of the world. For a time he separated himself from the Father as he took the sins of the world on himself. And so as we gather about the table, uh, let's think in terms of times where our love for man grows weak and uh, even when our love for God grows weak. And then turn to Jesus who strengthens that because he gave up his life that we might live. We have two emblems that we partake of. Uh, the emblem that uh, represents his body and the, rip and the emblem that represents his blood. Let's uh, pray for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to give up his life for us. We're so grateful that uh, he was willing to suffer that agony, uh, he, that he was uh, able to uh, feel that physical pain and yet take the sins of the world upon himself. We're so grateful for this and for your plan as we partake of this bread, help us to remember that. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. We know that Jesus shed his innocent blood. It was a part of it. It was designed that way. There was a, a representation there. Uh, the representation was in the old time sacrifices where they uh, butchered animals and the blood was shed. And Jesus ended that by shedding his blood one time.
for all as a sacrifice for our sins. As we drink of the fruit of the vine, let's think of that. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful that Jesus was willing to shed that innocent blood. And as the blood poured from him, it poured over us. It poured over us in such a way that it said to us that through my blood, you can have your sins forgiven, that you can uh, have your slate washed clean, and that through uh, the grace of God, through Jesus, that uh, you can one day live with him forever. We just thank you for that sacrifice. We pray in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. As a time of convenience, we also have been instructed to lay by and store that which we have been blessed and uh, use uh, that as a church uh, to further the work of uh, the Lord, to evangelize others, and also to uh, meet the needs of those who, uh, who do indeed have needs. And uh, we just pray that as we give, we'll understand why we're giving. We're giving because God gave to us. We're giving back to the Lord that which is his own. And we're giving it and laying it at the feet of our church and letting a church know, use these monies to further the work. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we have this time set aside that we can give back. We have so many great examples in both the Old and the New Testament of those who gave, of the tithe that was was given by Jacob, and of the giving of the widow and the might. And, uh, we're just so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, that that we have the the opportunity to give. Help us to give with an open heart. Help us to give gratefully, and help our church to use the money to further your work. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the song before the service is number 31. Number 31. It's entitled, Be Still and Know. It comes from Psalm chapter 40 and verse 10 that says, Be still and know that I am God. 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 I am the Lord that strengthens thee. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. So glad that you were able to participate in uh, the singing part of our worship service. I pray that the Lord was glorified and that we were uplifted through this singing. For those of you who were here uh, for the morning services that were uh, live, and if you weren't able to, it is live streamed. And so you can go to uh, Northfield Church of Christ NJ and you can see the morning service also that was live streamed. And uh, I just uh, hope that uh, this message this evening, as the message this morning, will be uplifting to you. And that um, you may have something that uh, uh, you can use and build upon. If uh, you're staring, uh, I uh, had a dermatologist appointment. So this little mark on my nose is uh, something that the dermatologist did to me. Uh, it's not some strange thing that's there. So uh, I apologize for it. Maybe I should have a Band-Aid over it so it doesn't look so weird. Again, if you were there this morning, 
you heard that the title of our lesson this evening was God is not far away. God is not far away. If we go to Psalm chapter 34, okay, the 34th Psalm, and we go to the 15th verse, Okay, Psalm 34, verse 15. It says, The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. All right? The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. We know that God is always there. If we turn to the 139th Psalm, the, the 139th Psalm is almost totally about God being everywhere. It's about God being omnipresent and God being omniscient. And if you read the 139th Psalm, which would be good for all of us, you will get that understanding that God is indeed everywhere. And so my title fits. God is not far away. With that in mind, and again, as we read the scripture, that would mean that he is where he can see the righteous. And you know what? That's what God is looking for. He's looking for his righteous people who have accepted him in faith so that he can be near them, so that he will not be far away from them. Um, but you know what? It's more than God just being able to see. It's more about, I should say, it is, it is that he is able to see about and to take care of. That means God is not just looking, but God is caring and he is taking part in our lives. God takes care of his own. All right, God takes care of his own. That's what the verse said. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears are open to those that cry. What this says to me is that the Lord is always near. And I love the last song that we sang. Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes we just need to sit back and just say that and reflect upon that and understand that God is always near and he takes care of his own. And you know what? I understand that to some people at some times, this may not seem the way it is. In other words, sometimes there are folks that think, where in the world is God? Uh, it doesn't seem like he's anywhere to be found. But in reality, he is. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is all-knowing. And he looks toward his righteous people. He is not far away. He's waiting there. But we have to turn to him. He's waiting. He doesn't yank us up by the lapels. He doesn't pull us and twist our arm. He says, you have to make the move. I'm here. I'm omnipresent. I'm all knowing. You have to accept me and you have to make that move toward me. And no, what, no matter what happens to us, if we are believers, if we believe in the Lord with faith, he's right there at our side. 
He's waiting for us to turn to him. But the interesting thing is there's more in Psalm 34. Okay, I read from verse 15. Let's look at verses 16 to 18. And again, let's read it in context. Let's read verse 15 again. It says, The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears are opened to their cry. Now get this, verse 16 to 18. But the face of the Lord is against the evildoers to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and save those who are crushed in spirit. That is our God of comfort. That is our God who cares for us. That is our God who's there all the time. And he answers those who turn to him, those that are righteous and believe in him. And you know, it, it says there, there are times that, that we're, we can be crushed in the spirit. And it says, if we are in the Lord, he's near to us near to the brokenhearted, and he saves those that are crushed in the spirit. I've heard people say, and, and, and it's a sad commentary on people, I'm not coming to the church because I just don't feel near to the Lord. I don't feel worthy. What better place to come to feel more worthy than coming to the Lord's worship service and being with other Christians that are there for the same reason. When we are crushed in the spirit, it's not time to turn away from the Lord. It's time to turn to the Lord because the Lord tells us he is not far away. And he says, if you cry, he will deliver you out of your troubles. Let's just not stop there. Let's go down to verse 22. This is the last verse of chapter 34. Verse 22. The Lord redeems the souls of his servants, and none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Do you notice, again, the ball is in our court. We must take refuge in him. We must be willing to, to get into the Lord. We must take refuge and solace in Him. What do we really have to fear? Though I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. We have nothing to fear all through the Psalms dotted in there is all about the closeness of God to us. Now, I'll be the first to admit, there are forces out there in the real world that will cause angst in our life. If you are still in the workforce, maybe it's one of your fellow workers. Maybe it's your boss. I was a school teacher. Sometimes it's the very children that you teach. Are you reaching those children? Are you saying enough? Are you being the example to them that you ought to be? Maybe it's closer. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe, maybe it's somebody who has problems of their own and, and that we can somehow interlude into their life and help them along the way. And maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a friend who's dealing with tragedy in his life. 
Maybe this friend is dealing with sickness. Maybe he's dealing with sickness of a loved one. And so what do we do under those circumstances? See, it doesn't make any difference to God. If we are believers and we take refuge in God, God is near to us and he's looking out for us. He's, he's not far away from us. God is standing and literally looking at you. And I, I'm so reminded of Jesus's words in Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 28. It says, come near to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Who does he want to come near? He wants his people who might be weary of life, who who may have burdens in life. I've mentioned it. If it's in the workforce, a boss, a fellow worker, whatever it might be, a neighbor, a friend. And it says, come unto me if you're weary and you're heavy laden. And here's the, here's the, the, the real heart of this matter. He says, take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and humble and heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God invites us. He invites us uh, to come to him. He invites us in the in the best of ways he says if you're weary if you're heavy laden i'm the one to come to i'm the one that will give you rest and so there, there's actually a question there it says are you going to come and it's almost as if it, it doesn't make a difference because God is looking out for you. Why? Because he's not far away. To the righteous, he is omnipresent. He is omniscient. He knows all and he sees all. And so I would almost challenge you when, when you walk out the door tomorrow morning, to, to whatever life has in store. And by the way, we don't always know. Again, if we're in the workforce, we know that we're going to our job. We have an idea of what we're going to do during the day, but we don't know what things are going to befall, are going to befall us. We drive along the road and we see traffic accidents. We, we see things that happen that maybe weren't even the fault of the person that was in the accident. Whatever life has in store for us, God is with us. He's not far from us. He won't leave us. If you do something or you go somewhere where you shouldn't be and you do something that you should not do, God still sees. We can't hide that from him. Not only does he see our goodness, he sees every sin that we commit. But at the same time, he'll always be ready to help you. He says, take my yoke upon you, those who are weary, those who are heavy laden. Those are sinners in some cases. He said, through Jesus, I provide the way to forgive you of those sins to give you the grace that you need, to, to get you through the hard times, because I'm there. God is not far from us. If we'll only come to him in humble obedience. If we turn to Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, 
verses 15 and 16. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. How do I know that I have someone that I can depend on? How do I have, I know that I have a savior who understands what I'm going through? God is not some old man up in the clouds. Jesus Christ came in the form of man and he experienced everything physically that men can experience. And this is what the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. It says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, and yet without sin. See, Jesus said this can be done. We can face the temptations. We can face those things out there that we could delve into. And we cannot delve into them by allowing the Spirit to guide our lives. But let's read verse 15. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us when, the rest of the verse says, in time of need. God wants to be there for us when we need him most. And why can he do that? Because he calls out to us, come you are weary and heavy laden, take my yoke upon you. It's light and easy. You'll find rest to your souls. What's God saying to you? He's saying, I'm not far away from you. God is always near. He says to us, we don't have to go it alone. We have God on our side. As the song said, God is so good. I love him so. Uh, he answers prayer. He's there. He's everywhere about us. He is what we want. He is what we need. And he is never far away. But if you remember, the verse says, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. But he doesn't want to hear those evildoers who don't believe in him. He wants to go to the righteous. The eyes of the Lord are to the righteous. How do we be, how do we become those righteous people? We become those righteous people by becoming children of God, by obeying his plan to get to him, by accepting his son Jesus Christ as our savior, by confessing that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God of repenting of the former way that we live and being baptized for the remission of our sins. If you haven't taken that step, this is your invitation to come to the Lord. If you need us tonight, we will come to you tonight. If you need us the next Lord's Day, come to us. Let us know. If you want to be part of God's family, and why would you want to do that? So that God will be near so that he'll say, come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden. That's what we want in our lives. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that some of the words that we have spoken are those that we can reflect upon and meditate upon. From Psalm 34, Psalm uh, 139, from Matthew 11, that uh, we can look to those scriptures, to Hebrews 4, verses 15 and 16, and find the truth of God's word, and find indeed that we have a God that is near to us, that wants to listen to the cry of the righteous, and help us with his mercy, through his mercy, and through the grace that he gives us through his loving Son. I pray that you would be with us through the evening, 
that you would uh, uh, help us to be desirous of being together with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Help us to uh, just uh, turn to you in, in everything, to meditate upon your word, to take it into us and use it to make our lives more godly lives. Continue to be with us. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to look forward to the next time that we can come together. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.